أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة على أهلها رب إشرح لي صدري ويستر لي أمري وأحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله على محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين I begin this lecture of mine in the name of Allah, the Supreme Absolute Being. He is Rahman, which means His love and mercy and attention reach out to each and every one of His creations at each and every moment of their lives. That He is Rahim, which, is, which means that His special love and mercy and attention are showered upon those amongst us who strive in His path. A series of lectures on the issue of anthropology continue with this eighth lecture and in this session uh, we are going to talk about the issue of death uh, as compared to life. So uh, this very important issue which concerns human beings, all human beings uh, are concerned with this issue and they have to understand the importance of this uh, very paramount uh, matter. So in this uh, discussion of ours today, we will be talking about the importance of death, the meaning of death as compared to the meaning of life. And then we will be going on to uh, mention the types of death. So basically these are the three main issues that will be discussed in this lecture and then in this session. Uh, the importance of death, the uh, definition and the meaning of death as compared to the meaning of life and the meaning and the various types of death which can be um, specified. Of course, this uh, will be increasing our knowledge about the issue of death. There should also be uh, an attitudinal change in us regarding the matter of death and also how to manage and uh, learn how to manage and cope up with this issue of importance. And all of this would uh, lead to a change in our behavior basically regarding death. So. Beginning with the first issue, uh, as we all know that death is something which is indispensable for human life. Uh, today we find that our fellow beings, uh, they come to this world, we have come to this world and one day we shall die and will not remain in this world as uh, over the centuries, the millennia that have passed by over the human race, this process is a very natural process. There is no doubt about it. Everyone knows for sure that he or she will die. This coming into this world is a, an arena, a domain which everyone enters from the time of his or her birth uh, completes the life cycle and then passes away and fades away uh, into maybe oblivion and life is no more. Life ceases to exist for that person in this world. So it starts with uh, birth, this life cycle starts with birth, continues uh, over the various stages of childhood and adulthood and then becoming old and then dying out. Everyone knows that he or she shall die. So there is no doubt about this uh, fact. Um, many of us are concerned about this and um, we uh, sometimes are not prepared for it or many people around us, they are not prepared for this uh, event to take place. Uh, some people die with satisfaction they are very much uh, satisfied with what they have done in this world and then they pass away very peacefully. Some others die accidentally. 
in any case, it is something which uh, happens and there is no control over it. Uh, it, uh, it can only be um, delayed, but it can never be stopped. And people over the centuries have always thought about it and th uh, they have tried to uh, delay it or even they have endeavored to stop it and they want to gain uh, eternity in this world and that is not possible. So without any doubt this uh, shall come about and as the Holy Quran and stays, emphasizes on the fact uh, wherever you are death shall overtake you though you be, may be in lofty towers you may try to protect yourself from death the angel of death shall descend upon us and in, in any case in, uh, it shall take our, away our lives so this is the importance that we attach to death we have to understand therefore what is the meaning of death how can we define it? Uh, is that definition philosophical or is that definition scientific? That has to be seen. But in any case, we have to try to define what is death. And to understand what is death, we have to understand what life is. How do we define life? If, defi if we can define the meaning of life, then we can uh, um, say that the cessation of that life is death. If we define, for example, life to be uh, the uh, uh, physical and f uh, physiological and biological uh, functions that are carried out by the human body as to, uh, to be life, then the cessation of those biological and physiological activities would be considered to be as death. Some people, as I said, as I just mentioned, define it to be and, uh, define life to be uh, activities, certain functions of the human body such as, uh, for example, uh, that human beings eat and digest their food. This is a, a function of the human body. It is uh, nutrition. It is in the intake of nutrition and the utilization of that nutritious uh, food that we eat. Or, for example, respiration. We breathe in, the, in this uh, world, uh, we breathe oxygen, we intake oxygen. Oxygen is very important for our lives. Without that, our body cannot exist in this world and continue to live. So the human being, the human function of respiration is, an, uh, is a biological and physiological activity which takes place and therefore it is an indicator of life. Or for example, uh, uh, movement and locomotion, moving about of one's own free will is a, a sign of life. Another one is, for example, reproduction. Uh, the human race continue, uh, uh, sustains itself in this world as do other animals by reproducti reproduction. So all of these are uh, functions of the human body which are considered to be indicators of human life. But uh, that, is that enough? Some, uh, is, is all of the, are only these activities considered to be life? Is it not possible that they may cease to excess, uh, exist, uh, they may cease to continue and function? The human body may go into a state where all uh, these activities st are stopped. Uh, but even then, life it continues. For example, in, uh, in, a, in a state of, of coma, for example, or in many states where today uh, p uh, the human being is put on a life support system, he cannot breathe on his own, he cannot eat on his own, he cannot do, uh, carry out any of those functions which I have just mentioned, and still he lives. So what is then life? Uh, the question is, the answer would be, maybe someone says, no, they are, these are maybe some of the functions, but the most important function of the human life is the mental act activity, the working of the brain, the functioning of the brain. The moment the brain ceases to function, that is when life ends. So the most important meaning of life is the 
functioning of the brain and the mental activities and the mental faculty of the human being is the most important thing and it's till the time it continues to function and then the human being is considered to be living. But then again, someone may say, may question the fact that we have, uh, we are today experience experimenting with, uh, with many living organisms which are being, for example, being frozen to be brought back to life after centuries maybe. And tomorrow maybe we can uh, achieve this for the human being and his mental functions may also stop and but then he could be brought back to life bringing back those uh, functions into order. So again this uh, second meaning that has been given for life could be, uh, could be uh, questionable. In any case, uh, the cessation of all such activities uh, would be death, which would imply that the human being has died. Now, if uh, we take the first meaning, it would mean that if those functions cease to continue, then he, uh, the person has died. If uh, the second f meaning is taken, then if, when we say that the brain function has stopped, brain death occurs, therefore life has stopped and death has occurred. This is uh, more profound, this meaning, second meaning is of course more fr profound. But is it all what death implies? Is just the cessation of this uh, uh, enough? As I said, it is possible maybe tomorrow the human uh, science uh, could take, uh, uh, go, take us ahead and st or even the brain function could be stopped and then a person could be brought back to life. So we have to say, add something more to this definition of death, that it is the eternal and complete cessation of life. It is not possible to bring back to life anyone who has ceased to live. The brain function has stopped in such a manner that it can never be brought back to life. That would be then death. Uh, so not only the physiological and uh, biological functions to, should stop, that is one level. The brain functions to, should stop, uh, that is the second level. And then, um, then we have to add another qualification for death and that is that is it, uh, the human being is not, being, is not capable of being brought back to life at all. And even the brain function cannot be um, uh, restarted. Uh, today, many people who are on life support systems, they are, by the virtue of the fact that their brain continues, stops to uh, function, they are considered to be death and dead, and then their life support system can be removed. Of course, it ha this implies, it has many implications, it has uh, legal implications, this issue has practical uh, implications philosophical implications and many other. Uh, religiously also we have to be very careful in taking a decision here whether it is death or not. In any case today uh, if the specialists and the experts of this issue consider a person to be brain dead, uh, uh, brain dead meaning that his functions of the brain can, uh, cannot possibly be brought back to life then he is considered to be dead dead and then his life support system may be removed. So it has to be in such a manner that the return of life is not possible at all but that is again uh, just uh, the physical aspect of death. If we go beyond that and if we accept as we Muslims say that the human being is not just the material being, being it is beyond the material being, there is a uh, spiritual aspect to it. The spiritual entity of the human being is the true entity of the human being. That is the reality of the human being. The body is just a vehicle. The body is just a uh, means to live in this material world. So, as uh, Aristotle has mentioned uh, in his works, that uh, the separation of the soul and the spirit from the body uh, is considered to be death. And uh, here, uh, if that separation uh, occurs and the soul see, stops to manage the affairs of the body and the body cannot be managed by the soul anymore, in that case death is, has taken place and the person is considered to be dead. And, but beyond that another definition, the fourth definition is there which is a more complete definition and it is just not the separation of the body, of the soul from the body. Uh, meaning that the body is not being controlled by the soul anymore 
and it cannot continue to manage it and then it, the attention of the soul and the spirit is removed from the material world and the soul and the spirit moves, uh, carries out its journey to the other world, the spiritual world, the world beyond, the life after death. So this is a more comprehensive meaning of death. The physical functions stop, brain function is stopped, the soul cannot manage the body, the spirit cannot take charge of the body any longer, it is a force to be separated, and from that separation onwards, the new journey, the new life begins, the, the life after death, which is the, a spiritual journey, and uh, that is considered to be the complete definition of death, and uh, uh, which also includes the uh, reference to the next stage of life, which does not end with death, but continues in the grave and on the day of resurrection again the human being shall be brought back to life and so on it will continue the spiritual entity shall continue the body will also be resurrected with the spirit and that would be another error that would be another dimension of our lives coming to the classification of death the third issue that needs to be mentioned today of course, there are three uh, uh, types which can be, we can classify de death into. One is the natural compulsive death, the death which has to take place without any, um, uh, without any doubt and without any control and voluntary control over it. We cannot stop ourselves from dying. Uh, that is uh, what we mean that it is a compulsive form of death as compared to natural death or as compared to voluntary death. So we can classify death into three types. The compulsive form, which is uh, without any doubt will come about in any case, uh, without any control uh, that we can exercise over it. We have another meaning for death that is called natural death. And then we have voluntary death. The compulsive death means that it is the departure of the soul from the body. The soul, as we said, uh, ceases to control and manage the affairs of the material body. It is uh, detached from the body and it starts the transition to the next phase of life. Now this is also of two types. One is again natural death and the other is accidental death. Um, um, the first type, the compulsive type of death, the t death which is uh, uh, taking place without any uh, volition of ours has two types again. Again, it, it can be classified into natural or accidental or as in Arabic it is called ikhtirami, meaning that for example a person has to die because for example uh, his body is not uh, capable of supporting life either because of old age the body has become so depleted, it cannot function properly, so uh, the body is not capable of supporting the soul. The soul cannot remain attached with the body and the soul has to leave the, uh, the body, therefore that death is uh, without any doubt uh, taking place, without any volition of the human soul. The soul has to leave the body. Or it has attained uh, the ultimate destination for the journey that was supposed to be a transitional phase of a higher level. This world's life in this world was supposed to take us to a higher level. We are, have reached a stage in this world where we are prepared to leave, we are happy to leave, and then in this sense uh, that death will take place because now there is no need for the soul to remain in the body and uh, the attachment takes place and uh, involuntarily it, uh, the death occurs. So this uh, involuntary death is either because uh, the, uh, the human being has reached the ultimate destination in this world and there is no need for him to remain in this world, he will be detached from this world. Or there is uh, death which is uh, taking place in any case because of the body being, uh, the functions of the body cannot remain to exist. They will, uh, the human body has become 
uh, all the strength of the body is uh, finished and it cannot support it. The, the, the human body, the cells, they are bound to die out, therefore the body has to, uh, the soul has to be separated. Or maybe in an accident uh, the body is completely crushed or is not capable of, rem uh, of, of maintaining life. Then we come to the second meaning. One is the first, the first was the compulsive and uh, involuntary type of death, then we have natural death. Here, when we talk about natural death, it is, uh, uh, again, it is uh, in contrast to the one which we have just mentioned. Here we are talking about the transformation of all uh, human beings and even other animals and all living uh, creatures, uh, living creations of Allah Almighty, who pass from one stage to a higher stage, from imperfection to a higher level of perfection. Whether human beings, whether animals, whether plants, they move from one stage to another. For example, the plants are eaten by animals. They become a part of the human animal body, so they go to a higher level of existence. The animals are eaten by human beings. The human beings go to a higher level. The plants and the Animals are digested into the human body and they become a part of the higher level. And in the same way, the human being also continues to uh, become perfect day by day. And at the end of the uh, time, when his, a person has reached higher level, he, it is called that the, it means that the lower level has died out and the higher level has started to exist. So the death of the lower level, the imperfect level, is called the natural death of that uh, lower level as compared to the life that is being to, given to the person at the higher level. And then we have voluntary death where, uh, for example, the human body is able to, the human soul, the human person in this world is able to become in a master of his desires, of his passions, of his anger, of his uh, human faculties. Of He controls every faculty according to moderation, according to wisdom, according to the principles of ethics and morals, and based on his faith. And in that case, the human body becomes completely in command, the human soul becomes completely in command of the human body and is capable of managing and controlling the body as he wishes, as he commands. And therefore, in that sense, a person can voluntarily detach himself from the body, a person's soul can be detached from the body and death can occur uh, voluntarily uh, and of course it can be for a certain period of time the human body, the human soul may be able to leave the body and be a master of the body and be, return, and be able to return to it whenever he wishes. For example, it's uh, as if the human soul leaves the body and when he is asleep. Sometimes while he is not sleeping and wide awake, he can detach himself. Uh, the person can detach himself or herself from the body. And as if a person uh, turns on the car, turns on the ignition of the car, the motor starts working and then he leaves the car. The car is running, but the human being has gone out of the car and then he can return of his own volition. This can be also considered to be as voluntary death. So in today's session we have uh, learned about the importance of death, we have learned about the meaning and definition of death as compared to the meaning of life and then we have talked about the various uh, types of death, the compulsive and involuntary death which is in itself uh, uh, divided into two parts. Then we have natural death, the uh, movement of all things from the imperfect state to a higher state and the lower state uh, dies out and uh, gives way to the higher state. And then we have voluntary death whereby the human soul is in complete command of the body and may detach itself of its own free will. So with this we end this session of ours.